Milling Through History presents McDonald's. The name McDonald's and the golden arches attached to it are synonymous and quite easily identifiable. There is yet to be a child alive who does not understand the term Happy Meal and, if given the opportunity, would love to have one. Adults will go after different food items, including hamburgers, cheeseburgers, french fries, shakes, and yet, for something that has been ingrained within our society for so long, perhaps it's important to understand how it all began. McDonald's itself was founded on December the 12th, 1948, by Richard and Maurice McDonald, who would open their very first restaurant on that day. By 1952, they had perfected their menu to have hamburgers, cheeseburgers, french fries, and shakes, as those four particular items were the highest grossing compared to everything else. For Ray Kroc, he would learn about the brothers and their successful franchise uh, organization after they had ordered from him an unbelievable eight milkshake machines. For Kroc, he had been having a hard time selling them, and upon checking out how their business model worked, immediately became enamored by it, believing that their method of creating fast food service could sweep the nation by storm. After a great deal of work, he would convince the brothers to allow him to franchise throughout the country. And on April the 15th, 1955, Kroc would open his very first McDonald's in De Plain, uh, Illinois. For Kroc, though, he would go ahead and begin sending out different McDonald's franchises throughout Illinois and the Midwest. However, it would not be until he met Harry J. Sonneborn that a new idea would come forward to Kroc. Instead of going ahead and leasing at the franchise locations, Sonneborn had recommended that Kroc purchase the actual real estate ground. Then he would lease out the franchise locations, thus ensuring a higher profit off of each store. Kroc would agree to this, and it is still the running practice of McDonald's to this day that the corporation will buy the physical real estate location for each of their restaurant areas. By 1958, McDonald's would boast that it had sold 100 million hamburgers, and in the following year of 1959, the 100th McDonald's would open. And yet, with the start of a new decade, the McDonald brothers had found themselves in a position where they were disagreeing with Ray Kroc on how their particular organization should be run. As a result, they would agree to sell the business rights to McDonald's for the sum of $2.7 million. A controversy has since ensued as to the sale of McDonald's, as the brothers had asked Kroc to let them keep the rights to their original store location, which was meant to be given to the founding store employees. Kroc had gone ahead and done a handshake agreement, but because it was never written down, he never honored it. As a result, when the brothers realized what had happened, they could no longer operate their original McDonald's stand as a McDonald's and had to change the location's name to the Big M. In a fit of irony, Kroc would go ahead and look at his former business associate as competition and would drive them out of business by opening a McDonald's a single block away, thus giving customers competition to choose from, and the brothers could do nothing about it. In 1963, Willard Scott would go ahead and enter the McDonald's family by portraying Ronald McDonald for the very first time. It was also in 1963 that McDonald's would introduce its very first new item to the menu, that being the filet of fish It was introduced in Ohio, outside of Cincinnati, namely due to the fact that the neighborhood that the store was located was dominated primarily by Catholics. At the time in 1963, Catholics would abstain from meat on Fridays, and so McDonald's, in an effort to bring Catholic uh, customers into the business, introduced this fish meal, thus ensuring they could go ahead and make a new profit. 1963 would also be a rather important year, as the, the one billionth hamburger would be sold. And with the success of one new item, came a string of other new items, as in 1968, the Big Mac was introduced. In 1973, the Quarter Pounder was introduced. 1975 would revolutionize the fast food industry as drive through service would be introduced. And in 1979, every child's dream came true as the Happy Meal was finally brought 
into existence. The 1980s would also see the introduction of new things, including the Chicken McNugget, which had proven itself to be rather difficult. Most people thought the Chicken Nuggets weren't really a good item for McDonald's, but the success of teaming up with the Happy Meal would allow children to go ahead and at least have smaller portions of chicken that they would eat, and because it came with everything else they loved, it soon became a big hit. In 1984, though, Ray Kroc would pass away, and McDonald's would go through a period of mourning. They would also go through a period of economic uh, instability, as the 1984 Olympics proved to be rather hard on the McDonald's franchise. In an attempt to go ahead and drive business, McDonald's had offered that any time the United States would win an Olympic gold medal, they would go ahead and gain free food. Well, the Soviet bloc of the United States uh, use of the Olympics in 1984 in Los Angeles meant that the U.S. went virtually unopposed. As a result, they were able to go ahead and win many medals, which resulted in McDonald's losing a lot of money. On January the 31st, 1990, McDonald's would open in Red Square, the ultimate form of American capitalism in the heart of communist countries. As such, this certainly helped to signify the end of the Cold War, as now even the Russians were beginning to notice the importance of McDonald's. As McDonald's goes into the 21st century, it itself has dealt with many issues, including the fact that people have argued its food is unhealthy and has contributed to the obesity of the nation. In response, McDonald's has worked to, end, to go ahead and bring in healthier food items, along with also changing their menu to provide more gourmet items and updating the look of their restaurants to be seen as more trendy and popular places for people to want to hang out. Now be sure to click like, share, and subscribe for future episodes of Milling Through History, and leave comments below for future episode ideas. And be sure to take a look at our suggested reading page.